graphing quadratic functions. All right, so just a refresher. The y-intercept is the point on a line or a curve that crosses the y-axis, and wherever it crosses the y-axis, x is going to equal 0. Okay, This is going to be useful again for us, um, even though we're not doing linear equations anymore. Okay, so concept one, we're still talking about graphing quadratic functions. And unlike linear functions or linear equations, um, we can't just find two points and connect them and have our line. Um, with quadratic functions, we have to get a few points, um, I like at least five, to get an accurate picture of our graph. Okay, um, One of the important pieces in that, though, is that um, you need to be, you need to have your five points near the curve, okay? Either um, the near the minimum, near the maximum, um, on that vertex, okay? Otherwise, you'll just get one half of it, and you won't see where it starts to make its curve, okay? Which is the, the most important part of the graph. So the steps we're going to take for this are we're going to start by finding our vertex, okay? Finding our vertex tells us a lot about the graph, okay? We're going to use our axis of symmetry formula, okay? So x is equal to negative b, and in this case I've got 4 over 2a, a is 1, so 4 over 2, okay? So our axis of symmetry, or the x value for our vertex, is going to be negative 2. All right. Now to find the vertex, given that our axis of symmetry is negative 2, we'll plug that in. So negative 2, negative 2, negative 2 squared is 4. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Minus another 2, that would be negative 10. Plus 4 would be negative 6. So our vertex is equal to uh, negative 2, negative 6. Okay? And that tells me um, not only where one of my points on my graph is, but it also tells me what other values of x I'm probably going to be looking for. Okay? Um, one of the helpful um, things that you can do is find your y-intercept. That's usually an easy point to find. All right, and we do that by setting x equal to 0. So if x is 0 here, well, 0 squared, or anything times 0 squared is all going to be 0, plus or minus anything times 0 is 0. So our y-intercept our y is always just going to be our c, right? Whatever that value that we're adding or subtracting that is not multiplied by x. Okay, so our y-intercept is going to be equal to 0 for my x value and negative 2 for my y. Okay, and now I can start to plot some points and get a pretty good picture of um, where my graph is going to be going. Alright, so I've got negative 2, negative 3, 4, 5, 6, okay, and then 0, negative 2. Okay, now this is the minimum, so it's going to open up, so I can already see kind of where my graph is going to go. The other thing you want to do is um, just put in one more, one additional value for x, and you want it to be on the same side of your graph as your y-intercept, okay? So for me, I'm going to go with negative 1. Okay, it's right between them. Um, it should be helpful to see my curve. All right, so if x, I'm going to start this over again. y equals x squared plus 4x minus 2. If I put in negative 1, I get 1 plus 4 times negative 1, negative 4 minus so that's going to be a negative 5. Okay, so when x is negative 1, y is negative 5. Okay, and we really can see the start of our curve. All right, now a time saver, something that's going to help us to um, not have to do quite as much, 
is going to be using our axis of symmetry. Okay, and I'm going to draw that line in. Okay, there's my axis of symmetry. Um, the fact that it's symmetrical means that any point over on this side can be reflected to the same location on this side. Okay, so I'm going to reflect this one over one, one away from the axis of symmetry on each side, and this one is going to be over two. And now I have my five points. Okay, so going back to this, find your vertex. Okay, you're going to use the axis of symmetry formula. Find your y-intercept. Sometimes the y-intercept and the vertex are going to be the same. All right, if that's the case, then instead of one other value, you're going to need to choose two other values of x. All right, and then you're going to get those three points, reflect the other two across, and draw your curve. And it'll look something like that. All right, um, let's do one more. We'll try and be quick. Okay, so um, start off with your axis of symmetry. So negative B over negative 2 times 2 would be negative 4. So I have a negative 8 over negative Four or a positive two. Okay, um, I'm going to plug two in. Two squared is four. Maybe I should make a little more room and go ahead and do that. So two squared is four times a negative two would be negative eight plus eight times two be 16 minus 5. So I've got a negative 8 plus 16, so that would be a positive 8 minus 5, which would be 3. So my vertex is equal to 2, 3. Okay, y-intercept, set this to 0, this to 0, I'm left with negative 5. My y-int is equal to 0, negative 5. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and plot those points now. So 2, 1, 2, 3, and 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right, this is going to be my um, y-intercept. This is my vertex, so this is going to be my maximum. Um, again, they happen to be two apart, so I'm going to be looking right here. I'm going to look at x is 1. So when x is 1, I'm going to have um, negative 2 times 1, and then 8 times 1, and minus 5. Okay. Negative 2 plus negative 5 is negative 7, plus positive 8 is 1. So my second point would be there. All right. Um, I could draw out my axis of symmetry. Let me just put some points there. So I'm going to reflect it over, it will be there, reflect it over here, another point there, and now I could draw my graph, which is probably erase this. So, oops, lost my point. Okay, draw my graph. Oop, does not look very neat right now, um, but you guys will have to be neater. All right, so that is graphing your parabolas. I think this is the fastest way. Um, and saves us the, the most amount of time using the y-intercept, the vertex, and then plugging in another value, and then reflecting those values so you don't have to find five actual values. You can just find three of them. Um, but you could just build a tree, put in five random values for x, and kind of hope that you get a good picture of your, um, of your parabola.